Entry 15 My father detested nobles. For him, nobles were inherently an evil that one ought to inherently hate. The idea of my father recognizing something else as evil seems utterly laughable, but only regarding nobles was he somber and serious. Even my prodigal father could put on a serious face if he happened to talk about nobles. But it was nothing more introspective nor profound than an unquenchable hate that happened to be directed at the upper class. He would spit and yell about how they were snooty and self-important, and blame them for the awful state of our lives. That they exploited us, they took from us, and that's why we were so poor. Because I grew up with such a father, I learnt those teachings of his. Unsurprisingly, I did not have a good first impression of the Joe Star family. Nobles, the people whom even my father could despise, they can't be very good people, I thought. When I met the heir to the Joe Star name, the only son, Jonathan Joe Star, I became confident in those thoughts, unshakably so. So, you're Dio Brando? I knew in an instant, through intuition alone. With that smile on his face and those words, I knew I was right. This boy was an inheritor, neither a giver nor a taker. An inheritor. I immediately became irritated. Worse, infuriated. I was boiling with fury. By this point, I was already devising a means to usurp the Joestar family's fortune. I planned to stay quiet and patient for an opportunity. Jonathan Joestar was nothing more than prey to me. I had no expectations of him. If anything, I expected to tame him as my lapdog. But I did not intend to aggress or hurt him. Towards both Lord Joestar and his son, I intended to be a well-mannered, obedient young man. There's no point discussing my plans from my childhood, so long ago, over a hundred years. But, if I had maintained my course, I have no doubt that I would have obtained the Joestar's wealth, a perfect crime that may have been realized. No, I'm sure it would have succeeded. But I was unable to be patient, to stay quiet. I succumbed to emotion. I spent my passionate emotions on a tremendous kick on Jonathan's pet dog. I believe its name was Danny. I kicked it very, very hard. I wanted to kill it then and there, and later I did incinerate it alive. Seeing my kick, Jonathan yelled, enraged, that he wouldn't forgive me. But that rage was what I wanted. I wanted to be unforgivable because I could not forgive him. Yes, I could not forgive him. I could not forgive his smile. I could not forgive him for approaching me. I could not forgive his cheerfulness. I could not forgive his friendly attitude. I could not forgive such a spoilt, rich child who knew no suffering, that a child like him existed in this world. He did not even give away the things he had. He only inherited them, without knowing the need to have to take from anyone. And that I could not forgive from the bottom of my heart. I had to beat him. I had to make him feel pain. I had to crush his head under my foot. I have never wanted to understand my father, but in that moment I understood why my father detested nobles. So, I made a new plan. I decided I would emotionally torture and isolate the Joestar heir, Jonathan Joestar. I would have to anyway, to claim the Joestar family fortune, but now I had many reasons besides to do so. And this plan, I decided to stay the course no matter what. To take everything away from him, the inheritor. Entry 16 My writing has gotten a bit emotional, so even though I am writing this on the same day as the previous entry, I will shift to a new page here. Even now that over 100 years have passed, it seems surprising for my anger to have awakened that day. And thinking back on that day 100 years ago, my determination began developing. Years afterwards, I fulfilled my goal. 
I successfully claimed this body from him. In other words, though I had failed in capturing the Joestar family's fortune, I took something even greater than that from Jonathan, his life. You could say I took everything from him. I accomplished my plan. But at that point, I felt no sense of success. Much like when I killed my father, I felt only a tasteless, meaningless, insipid feeling of despondency. After I take, I think, why did I want this? I could say that about many things. I may be prone to putting the cart before the horse, or perhaps my goal is the act of taking itself. Perhaps it is because of my and my father's inability to tolerate others having what we do not that we become takers. And so, ceaselessly, take and take. I'm certain that's it. And even if I'm wrong, it does not matter. I don't want to become a giver, like my foolish mother, even if it kills me. But I absolutely never want to become a carefree inheritor like Jonathan. Nobly and with pride, I will continue being a taker. A century ago... And a century from now, no matter how many years pass, that feeling will not change. I exposed these true feelings of mine to Jonathan only once, when, impossibly, Jonathan returned the pain I inflicted on him. Of that I will write tomorrow. I have received a report from Noriaki Kakyoin. He has located a descendant of the Joestar family, Jotaro Kujo, and now pursues him. Apparently the Cujo boy is the most vulnerable. Jonathan's grandson, Joseph Joestar, ought to be an old cripple now, with a useless stand like Hermit Purple, however he is currently travelling with a fortune teller named Muhammad Avdol. Muhammad Avdol, a stand user with whom I personally made direct contact previously. A man with boundless ability, one whom I wanted to induct to my group, but he fled. I was unable to control him with a flesh bud. I thought it odd that he feared me instantly, but now I see he had heard about me from Jonathan's grandson. Enya the hag hinted that his stand of flames may have contained some power to detect souls. Perhaps Avdol was someone I needed to attain heaven. I very much wanted to make him a subordinate, but now that he has taken his place alongside the Joestars, I have no choice but to give up on that goal. A pity, 